say, is it Dumoy? Du, du, it's Dumois. Dumois. <laughs> is that you, it's Dumois, right? Very <laughs> sexy. Um, yes, it's Dumois. Like, de, like the number two in French, and moi, like me in French. So, like, to me. Gotcha. So, what what does that mean, though? Exactly. That's is that what it means? Just to me. I mean, it's a it's a na- it's a word that was totally made up by somebody that I started the account with like seven years ago. Um, that we thought like sounded chic. I don't know. We were just being like stupid, and just she was like, "I have this great idea for the name of our account." Um, actually, we had a website also. Uh, where we publish like different interviews and shopping guides and fashion inspiration. So the account was in conjunction with the website at the time, and it was called Demois. Interesting. Yeah. So why? So it was just a, kind of like this sounds cool. That's it's sexy. We're gonna say Demois. Yeah, we were just like, I mean, it was honestly, it was like a two second thing. They, she was like, I have an idea. I'm like, cool, let's do it. So you've, you know? you've been working on this account for seven years, you said? Um, I mean, I would say like three years from 2013 to 15 when it was something completely different. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Then it sort of fell by the wayside for five years. Uh, I'm really bad at math, guys. Sorry. <laughs> 2015, 2015 to now is like five years. Um, so then like five years, nothing, just me posting random shit. And then now 2020 is what it is now, which it, it was never like this before. So yeah, why did, why did you decide to pick it back up? And like, how did, how did you get into all these like blind items uh, on there? Cause I mean, for having an account that's private, it's kind of hard for people to find it, but I mean, it's obviously taken off so big. Yeah. So Back in March, I just post. So I had like 45,000 followers at the beginning of quarantine. And it was literally like a couple days after everyone went into lockdown. And I was just bored sitting at home. And I just threw up a post and was like, okay, guys, you know, give me your celeb encounters. And some somebody, like, I didn't even know who my followers were. Like, I didn't know if they worked in entertainment. I didn't know, you know, what their background was. But people started writing in and it actually started with a post about Leonardo DiCaprio and it just snowballed from there. And by word of mouth, we are where we are today. So it was literally word of mouth. So what is your background? Um, I do not work in the entertainment industry. (laughs) I will say that. Um, And that's all I'll say. (laughs) I mean, that to me is most fascinating point that you have one of the biggest celebrity encounter celebrity spotting websites but no background in entertainment i love it no i mean it was it was something i was just like interested in like anyone else i wasn't obsessed with it like trust me my followers know so much more than i do i feel like a fucking idiot sometimes because they'll be like no they they correct me every second and i'm like okay you know i'm happy to correct myself and be wrong um but i've learned that i know nothing like the fans and the people that follow me know so much more about every celebrity and their backgrounds and everything. It's crazy. So why is the site still private? Why is it, why do you have a private account? So I like to see who joins. Um, I like to see like those blue check marks that come in, like who, who's joining under their real account. Who's not, who I find out is following later, but I know is not joining is, is not in under their real account. I like to just see all that. So that's why. So you literally hand approve every person that's coming in. Yeah. Dang. And it it depends like on the day. Like last week there was a lot of press that came out, so I got like an influx of followers and it took me days to approve them all. Like my hand was cramping up. I was like, I I why did I make this private? Like it would have been so much easier to just have people follow um and not be private, but I don't know. It's uh, it's it was it's been private since probably like May. Yeah. Like it's, it's not it's not something new. I didn't just decide to make it private. Um, it's been that way since May. So. So you say you look for the blue check marks. Who with a blue check mark? Who is a celebrity that follows the account? Um, I know I'm like being so annoyed by not giving any, giving any information, but I don't like to say, and this is why. I think it's like their dirty little secret that they follow because I did have somebody who was a celeb who followed from their real account 
and then unfollowed and then refollowed from their Finsta. <laughs> and I just happened to know what their Finsta was because I did this whole thing. I don't know if you guys were following, but like this summer I did this whole thing where I like posted everyone's Finstas. Um, and Finsta is their, their, their fake account, their, their second account. Their, yeah. I feel like with, with Instagram though, but I, I, I could technically go scroll through and try to figure it out. Right. With the blue chat marks? You're, yeah, if you're following, I think if you have mutual, if there's like mutuals, you can figure it out. If you don't have mutuals, then you can't. Um, but I mean, there's not like, you know, there's not that many. And some of the blue check mark people are like reporters or people that work in media. Like, I like to see that as well. It's not just celebrity. Um, so, yeah, I don't like to say because I feel like. You know, maybe I don't know. Maybe they're like ashamed to follow. I have but, no idea. But then I feel like they can't follow publicly because I could go in their their stuff and see who they're following, right? I'm like scrolling through your. <laughs> but also, why would they be, dude? But why would they be ashamed to follow if they follow Us Weekly? What's the? I don't find the difference between what you do and an Us Weekly or our People or anything like that. It's the same. It's just an entertainment news site in some way. I have no idea. That would be a question for the person who I caught doing it. Um, and then I act actually like two weeks ago or last week, I had someone who I'll say they're on a reality show message me and basically confirm like what I thought. They, she was like, um, you know, everyone's obsessed with your account, but they don't follow. And I'm like, well, how can they be obsessed if they don't follow? And then I was like, oh, duh. Fake they're accounts. Following fake accounts interesting the person even said yeah you know they don't want the fans or trolls to see that they follow because some people hate the account which is so crazy because you know it wasn't created with any malicious intent it was just created out of boredom and it just caught on and it you know it it's not to like bash celebrities was the reality person you're talking about was that claire crawley <laughs> no she blocked me <laughs> no why because people kept writing in that they were seeing Dale out in New York City. Well, first of all, people have been writing in sightings of Dale since the summer. And I didn't put two and two together because I don't watch The Bachelor. So I was like, oh, okay, here's like a dude from The Bachelor. And then once it was announced that they were engaged and, you know, it was at The Bachelorette, right? He won. Yeah. I was like, oh, shit, this, bit, this dude's been all over New York City, like, at the begin at the end of the summer. So then people started writing in like they saw him out with girls and somebody was sitting on his lap and he kissed somebody on the lips and it became this whole big thing. Um, and I guess it got back to her and she was pissed about it, like rightfully so. But, you know, if somebody wrote in like, I know Dale, he loves Claire, he would like die at the stake for her, like I would be happy to post that. But nobody was sending that in. People were just sending in, you know, him gallivanting all around New York City. So that's what I was posting. So how do you how do you decide what you're going to post? Because I feel like, you know, obvious. so Adam and I used to work at TMZ and there was always that kind of line of like, where, what do you post? What do you not post? Because there's so many tips that come in, but yours is on a heightened level of people seeing stuff and hearing stuff and just writing in. So how do you decide this is okay to post? Um, well, I mean, I've become a lot better at, you know, figuring out things that I believe are total bullshit. And that's just by doing it, doing this and, you know, seeing somebody's profile, seeing the way something's worded. That's like a big thing big part of it is the way people word stuff um so if somebody's to me you know seems like what they're relaying could be true then you know I'll post it but if it's something ridiculous and you know as the account gets bigger I get more and more ridiculous shit um then obviously you know those don't those, those don't see the light of day. I just read them and I'm like, this person's fucking demented. Has there been anything that's come in that you were like, there's no way this is truthful? And then like a couple weeks later, it comes out and it's truthful. Because I can tell you my biggest moment of that was all the Bruce Jenner stuff. I remember it was like Star or National Enquirer did this whole story about Bruce Jenner wearing dresses. And I was like, this is the biggest pile of shit I have ever read in my life. And then flash forward, I was like, Oh my God, that was actually true. Have you ever had one of those moments? I mean, nothing as salacious as like that. 
um, little things like pregnancies, engagement, stuff like that. I mean, I've only been doing this since March. So that, um, I don't think enough time has lapsed for maybe to see that kind of trajectory. But maybe in the future, something will happen. And then I'll put two and two together and be like, oh, shit, like somebody wrote me about that. Yeah, sort of like the Dale situation. Yeah. Yeah. It's little stuff. It's nothing like that big. Do publicists ever send you blind items about their clients just so they're kind of throwing a little gas on the fire to get their career going or just kind of throw some stuff with their name? If they do, they they submit through the website where they can use a pseudonym and a fake email. But my followers definitely think that they do because I'll post something and they'll be like, come on. Like, for example, like there was a bunch of stories about Emma Watson, um, like not being great on set to work with and then all of a sudden like the next day I got like five emails in a row like how amazing Emma Watson is <laughs> and I always look to show both sides you know so obviously I'm gonna post it but but like the followers aren't stupid they're like all right Emma Watson's publicist like we get it um so or like they'll always like blame the mom they'll be like all right Chris Jenner or like Lisa Rinna but that was another one like somebody wrote in like Amelia Hamlin's like so amazing to work with and then everyone was like okay Lisa right now working overtime like stuff like that like <laughs> yeah so they see through it and I think it actually pisses them off in a, in a way but I've always like since the beginning I've showed the good and the bad so I'm not going to stop doing that because I think a publicist sent something in well do the publicists ever write to you saying this is wrong take this down They've written to me saying this is wrong, but they didn't say take it down. They said it's up to you, um, which was, like, annoying because I was like, just tell me what you want me to fucking do. Like, I don't give a shit. Like, I'll take it down. And it was something, like, so it wasn't even anything that bad, but it kind of put the celebrity in a bad light. Um, and they were like, it's up to you. It's your account. Like, I'm not going to tell you what to do. So I winded up taking it down, but they didn't ask for it to be taken down. What was the story? Um... It was about, I mean, it, it, let me just also preface by saying, like, I don't know if what I was posting was true. The, the sure. publicist did say it wasn't. It was about Serena Williams' wedding. This was a long time ago. This was, like, month three of going into this. Okay. Um, and they were totally lovely and nice about it. And, um, you know, I appreciated them setting the record straight. Like, I always appreciate if somebody in the know you know, writes in and says, this is not correct. You know, I, I don't, I don't, you know, discourage that. Like I want yeah. that to happen. Well, um, so, so that, so you pulled that down. What was the one story that you posted that like literally got the most attention, most engagement from the followers? Um, I don't know if it got the most attention from the followers, but it like, was all over different other news outlets the next day. And it, I didn't even know if the story was true, but it was about Harry Styles and Tracy Ellis Ross. Um, somebody saw them right before quarantine having lunch or dinner, and they had overheard their conversation and they just had relayed in the message that the conversation was flirty. And certain news outlets took that and ran with it. Like, are Harry Styles and Tracy Ellis Ross dating? And I was like, what the fuck? Like, you know, I don't even know if this is a true story. Like I, why would you report that they're possibly dating when there was no photographic evidence? Like I sort of, I, I did wind up like drilling the source because I was like, listen, like anything about Harry Styles, like I, that I post, I have to, you know, be sure that I'm pretty thorough with asking questions about it because his fans are crazy. So if I post something about Harry, like I just need all the information. Um, so the source was pretty adamant that, you know, they were spotted together. And then I later found out that they're friends, but that was something that like kind of was, went to Twitter really quick. And once it goes to Twitter, then, um, it could be kind of crazy. So that was something. And then also the Stasi baby and Noah Centino's, um, supposed marriage. That was something else that kind of went crazy. I don't know if you guys saw that. Yeah, yeah, no, I did. What What do you think was the actually biggest story that you had a big part in breaking? What did you say? It's, you know, the one that you're like, man, we, we did this. We, we were the ones behind it. We broke this story. 
Um, I mean, I would have to say that one, the Noah Centi. I don't even know how to pronounce this. Yeah, yeah. Centineo, that one. Um, there was information in that story that I couldn't post um, because my source asked me not to. But I mean, I stuck by what I saw, and it was shocking. I'll say that. Didn't you have a um, lot though from like the Ellen scandal too, though? That was pretty early on, and I posted the stuff about Ellen before really it was it was it was on Twitter. So I felt like what I was posting was kind of on par what was on Twitter. So I don't think I really posted anything that was news to anyone at that time. Um, but sh- but then she later came out and apologized like months later. So I I don't really feel like the information that I was posting about her was anything that unique just because of all the Twitter stuff that was going on. Um, I did actually know that Scarlett Johansson and Colin Jost got married before it was announced and I posted it and then all his fans, which I don't know if you guys know, he has like a pretty large fan base. Um, I did not know that. I didn't know that either. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, His fans like convinced me like it couldn't be true. Like, Colin was hosting, you know, Saturday night, like, it, it can't be true. So then I got nervous and I took it down. And then an hour later, like, Meals for Wheels posted a confirmation that they got married. Yeah. So pissed that I took it down. But I knew that I was the first person to post about that. Um, I don't, I mean, I'm sure other people knew, but I definitely posted about that first. Do you so I would say, like, those, those three things and the Harry thing. Do you have a favorite fan story that's been sent in? That you, like you think back, or you're like, that was a dope story. A true one, because most of like the crazy fan ones are are like fanfic. Like everybody has sex with Harry, and they write it. They write. They try to convince me like it's real, or they go on like a date with Harry Styles. I'm like, come on, guys. In the beginning, I used to think it was true. I'd be like, wow, like he really likes dates his fans, and then I realized it wasn't. No, I, um, want, I want a true fan story that just someone being dope or being awesome out in public. I mean, I get a lot of stories about Adam Sandler where he's, you know, really nice to fans. Like, I, this is something that's stuck with me. It's nothing, like, crazy, but it's something that him and Gwyneth Paltrow, I got to, a story about her doing this, which I thought was pretty cool. Like, um, they were out to dinner, and a celeb approached Adam and Gwyneth. These are two separate instances, and wanted a picture, and they both said, you know, not right now, but after we're done eating dinner, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, we'll take the picture. And then they doubled back and actually went up to this fan's table and, you know, kept good to their word and took the picture. That's really cool. So it's nothing crazy, but I feel like it's, like, kind of cool that they kept their word and did that. Um, so those two stories kind of stuck out to me, but... Um, nothing, like, too crazy. I mean, there's definitely, like, the people that avoid the fans... And then there's definitely the people like Adam Sandler who um, seems to be pretty cool. Yeah. You, you mentioned Ellen. Uh, James Corden. We're hearing a lot about James Corden now, similar, maybe comparable to the Ellen situation. What are you hearing now about James Corden? Um, I mean, this, the things that I hear... So basically, I don't know when this happened, but did he... In 2020, did he do an article where he said, like, fame went to his head and he's he's receiving therapy. I think that happened this year. So I, so I feel like everything that I heard and posted was before that. And I think that his reputation was known in the industry to sort of be a dick. And maybe that's why he came out and said he was getting therapy. So basically I was posting all these stories and then people were sending me this article, like, um, he's getting help. Like he realizes he's, he's like this and he's getting help. But so, so according to you, according to your, you know, your account, who is the nicest celebrity in Hollywood? I would say, I mean, these are all, I'm going to, I'm going to answer this question based on fan encounters. Sure, yeah. I feel like there's definitely like two sides to everyone, the fan side and then like the work side. Um, Adam Sandler is one, Drew Barrymore, Julianne Moore, Hugh Jackman, Harry Styles, Selena Gomez, um, trying to think who else, Paris Hilton, Kim Kardashian. They're like consistently nice to fans. I would actually agree with all of that. 
from my experience, all those people you just named are consistently just nice people. They're pleasant. They're good to the fans. They're they're good people. Um, I could I can only say from seeing with the fans and just dealing with them as a as a journalist as a pop, they're they're very good people. They're the biggest celebrities out there. I find this really interesting that the biggest celebrities on the planet are some of the nicest people. It's like they've under they understand the game. There's a reason that they're a list stars because that's how they are. It's like the reality stars and some of these so- social media people that like fame they're coming up and they're getting famous and it goes to their head and they can be dicks to people all the time and you're like i don't understand how is drew barrymore one of the nicest people out there but like this youtuber sucks at life you know yeah i mean i would agree with that but i also think there are some a-listers who can be assholes so like who who's the who's the (laughs) biggest dick you get uh for like with people writing in consistently, you're like, wow, this person must be a piece of crap because the amount of emails I get about them. I mean, I don't want to say they're a piece of crap. I just want to say that, like, maybe they handle fame a little bit differently than others. Um, So, you know, I don't want to say that makes them a bad person. That just makes them who they are. But obviously, like, somebody I love to post about is David Schwimmer. Um, He seems to avoid fans at all costs. Mm -hmm. Um, I would also say like, this is so random, but Chris Noth also um, is someone who will avoid fans at all costs. Um, I'm trying to think who else there is an A-lister that I just got this whole story about. I don't want to say her name. She's pretty big. Um, but there was this whole story that somebody sent me where she was like really, really shitty to fans, like really shitty. And I said to the person, I was like, I can't post this. Like, are you kidding me? Like, there's no way I'm posting this because she's like a pretty big celebrity. Um, so her with a, we'll just say question mark, a list. <laughs> are, are we going uh, actress or musician? Or, actress. Okay. Okay. I'll say actress. Um, most, I feel like. Most musicians, I feel like I don't really get like bad, bad things about. I'm trying to think like who. So we we get a lot like we talk to a lot of people in the industry. And one person's name that comes up that we're always a little shocked about is Taylor Swift. And she gets kind of a bad reputation out there in regards to. Yeah. And I'm just curious what what your knowledge is of Taylor. I'm pretty surprised to hear that. I mean, this is the thing. Like, if somebody sends me a DM about their encounter at a meet and greet, I used to post them a lot. But then I started saying to myself, like, that's their fucking job is to be nice at a meet and greet. So, you know, I'm not going to put, you know, a celebrity on a pedestal for being nice at their job. So a lot of the Taylor interactions I got were at meet and greets and they were all lovely and amazing. I don't get a lot of like Taylor in the wild. So maybe that is true. I I can't really speak to that because um, it's a lot of like meet and greet situations, but she's also super private. I don't, I don't, I don't get a lot of new stuff about her. It's mainly like older stuff. Mm. Um, And it's never really her being terrible. She also has like a crazy fan base. So I get a lot of backlash if my information is not correct um there'll be they correct me very quickly <laughs> i uh-huh. what i've noticed is it doesn't like you know some of these fan bases are so wild it doesn't matter w- what you say even if it's true they still come after you i mean it's it's wild like you literally can't say anything or oh you got you know two million fans just going after you yeah i mean the thing is like i'll i'll engage with them like i won't try to convince them otherwise things that I think are true that they don't but I'll definitely like engage um because sometimes some of them are really nice and they like provide me with information that I don't know like Timothy Chalamet is another one with a really big fan base um that he was getting spotted a lot in New York City at one point and you know his fans knew exactly where he was and he wasn't in New York he was in Europe so people were just seeing like Timmy doppelgangers and just writing in that it was him. So like stuff like that, they're helpful about. So after running the account, you hear a lot of stories. Who's like the one person, like the one celebrity, if you could, you'd love to have a drink with and love to like hang out with. Like none of them. I don't know. (laughs) (laughs) I I like, I don't like literally no one. 
I don't know. I would say, hmm, whoever is going to, like, be themselves the most. I don't know. For some reason, I don't even... I don't even know why this person comes to mind. Maybe because I get like so many nice stories about him, but Keanu Reeves, maybe him. Cool dude, yeah. His yeah, fan he just base seems, like, is cool. insane. Um, no ego, you know, someone like that. Okay. I don't know. Everyone's ruined for me. I mean, it's a shame, actually. But yeah, do yeah, you, do you feel like this honest. account has jaded you? Oh, totally. Nothing is as it seems. I, honestly, like, I never really thought about the stuff I, I need to think about now. I never thought about it before. So being forced to think about the way people behave um, definitely has jaded me. What about, like, are TikTok stars trying to get on the site? Like, what's your deal with TikTok stars? Because they're around so much right now during quarantine, at least in L.A. Are you writing about them much? Are they trying to get on the site? I mean, I personally watch, I love TikTok. I watch it all the time. So I like to post about them, but I don't think a lot of my followers care. Um, I just think that they're a little bit older so that they don't even know who they are. But if I find something that I think is interesting, I'll post it just because I know like there's a small percentage that do care, but majority doesn't. They don't like some people will be like, I don't even know who these people are. Some yeah. people say that about this. Some people say that about the celebrities I post. They'll be like, "I don't know who half these people are," and I'm like, "Dude, yes, you do. You know who they are. If you Google them and see their face, sometimes you need to see the face with the name. Um, but if they don't know who half the celebrities are, then they're not going to know who anyone on TikTok is." So we've I've got like a little funny story for you about your account. Um, you had posted something about Larsa Pippen, literally two days before our Larsa Pippen interview dropped. And Adam sent it to me, and it was like you question, well, one of your fans or you or whatever, questioning what had happened between her and the Kardashians. And he literally sent it like, oh my God, she's going to freak because we're about to drop this interview in two days, and we felt like we were going to give you the answer. <laughs> and it also happened again with Bryce Hall. Bryce Hall and Addison Ray. There was something you had posted about them and their relationship being fake. And we dropped an episode right after your question was posted on. Yeah, there. we asked them specifically about your what you guys were saying on the site. Um, yeah. So the Larsa question I get asked all the time. I mean, people are always just like, what happened between Larsa and the Kardashians? What happened between Joyce and the Kardashians? What happened between Monica Rose and the Kardashians? Like, I get that question all the time. Um so, and I've posted it before, but I guess I don't even know what possessed me. Oh, I know what it was. Somebody, I was doing old stories and somebody sent me a picture and Larsa and Courtney were in it. And that made me just bring up the question again. So it was kind of just like random. It wasn't even, you know, planned or anything. And I, I think I asked everyone why they thought Larsa wasn't friends with the Kardashians anymore. And a lot of the answers were about Tristan so, I know that I don't think that was her answer. Her her was Kanye. Kanye, yeah. Um, but people brought up Tristan, and I mean the I mean maybe it was a combo of both. It's just it's sad. It's sad to me because in reality, it's like a friendship that seemed pretty solid is no longer. So yeah, I know it's yeah. gossip, but it's also like kind of sad. Um, and then the Bryce Hall thing, I thought I just thought that was funny that somebody was like, on December fourth they will break up. <laughs> like I didn't even like I didn't even take it seriously. I mean I did think it was peculiar that they just like randomly got back together. Um but the the whole like December third thing I thought was like just a funny joke and I posted it. Because sometimes you have to post something to get the conversation rolling. Yeah. Sure. Well, that actually um, turned into one of our biggest questions for him because you posted it up there and it started to become speculation for a lot of people. So we're like, let's ask him. We've got him on the podcast. Let's ask him about this. And his answer was just great. Like, yeah, no, it's it's actually December 4th. You know, like he just made light of it. And it was just interesting, the timing on it. Um, yeah, I saw his answer. I thought it was pretty funny. I don't know. He, he seemed kind of nervous to me, like answering. I was like, hmm, people sent me the clip. And I was like, he kind of seems like a little bit nervous, but I don't know. I, I'm. He was a cool guy. We we actually really enjoyed having him on. He was fun. There's just something refreshing about someone new to the industry, you know, and just 
the excitement about doing all of this. And I, I don't know. He was a cool. He was a cool interview. Yeah, he, he seems like he's like a lot more genuine, like in interviews than he is on TikTok. Um, I know he gets like a bad rap for some things. I, I watch his TikToks. I'll like admit it. I don't know like what about them is just like mesmerizing all those guys in this White House. Um, but yeah, I saw the clip. I thought it was it was funny. Are you nervous of the legal percut you know, the the legal issues that could potentially happen? Like I know you always say like this is not factual stuff, this is what people send to me and stuff, but I mean, does that worry about you about the legal ramifications you know, thing, ramifications that could come from this? Yeah, I mean I try to be I'm trying to be more careful as the account gets bigger, which is why there are more blinds. Um so if I think that something could be construed like defamation or liable, like I'll make it a blind item. Um, so, I mean, if it, if it happens, like it, it happens, I'll, I guess I'll deal with it, but yeah, I'm, not, I mean, is it- I'm not trying to, you know, I'm not trying to get myself in trouble. I'm not going to post anything that I know is gonna cause a stir. Is there like a line that you won't cross? Like something comes in, you're like, Nope, this is just, it feels yucky or I don't want to, be part of it. I'm just curious. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of things I get um, about different celebrities' sexual orientations that I won't post about um, if they're not if they if they themselves don't talk openly about it. Yeah. Um, I won't post about that stuff. There's some legal things that um, you know are deemed illegal mm-hmm. in certain states. I'll say. Okay. I don't know if you could read okay. between the lines on that one um, that I won't post about. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yep. And, you know, any, like, I guess, like, illicit drug use. I mean, weed is whatever. I feel like it's, like, legal in certain states. But anything, like, illicit, I, I won't post about that either. And people want to know about that. They ask me about that all the time. The gays always write me. They're like, can you just, like, tell us who's gay and who is <laughs> Oh, I can't tell you that. <laughs> like, give the gays something. I'm like, I, I'm sorry, I can't. <laughs> do you ever, so do you ever feel bad when you post something? Because again, it goes back to me doing this so long. There were certain stories that I would post, and I'm like, I feel bad, but it's also newsworthy, or it's also, you know, content that is out there. I don't know. The, it, I always feel like that's a weird line for journalists, people in this industry you know, you post something and you, you kind of feel bad, but that recently happened to me, by the way, I had video of Dennis Rodman and you know, I was him saying this here, but I had a video and it wasn't the right look for him. He was surely, you know, he, he was, I mean, he was something else. And I, I, I was like, do I put this video out? And like, I it was like, I'm not going to give this to the outlets. Cause this is, I, mean, I don't know. I got a little nervous really with bad. this video. It, it was pretty rough, but I was like, I need the YouTube clicks though. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I was like, fuck, I need, you know, that's, that's a part of my income. But uh, I did struggle with that for a long time. Has that happened to you? Are, do you guys anything you struggle with? or? Um, I mean, I'll feel bad posting about somebody who isn't great that I know the fans love um, because I know they like hold that celebrity in like re- really high regard. Um, so if I start posting that this person's like a dick or treats the people they work with like shit, I know that like their hearts will break and there is somebody specific I'm thinking about. Um, I don't want to say their name, but that I, I held off posting about, um, how this person conducted themselves at work because I knew the fans would be upset. And then I just kept getting more and more stories about them. And I was like, all right, it's time. So, I mean, it's something little. It's just somebody being a jerk. But I I did feel bad, like, breaking people's hearts about that person. Um, so, something like that. But videos, like, I, I received a video of a very, very drunk reality person falling drunk on the street. Like, stuff like that I wouldn't even think about posting. Um, so, I try to keep it as light as possible. What's the cr- Yeah, what's the craziest video that someone sent to you? And don't give me the names, but what happens in the video? Oh, God. Uh, drugs. Somebody doing drugs. Wow. Gotcha. Like bad, bad drugs? Uh- <laughs> <laughs> what do you consider coke? Well, uh, I'm, I'm, uh, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of levels of drugs there. You know what I'm saying? Doing so poppers. Like popping a pill or doing heroin. I mean, there's kind of a big difference. 
Um, I mean, it wasn't weed, but it wasn't heroin. It wasn't like shooting up heroin. God, I don't even <laughs> want to fucking see that. Are you kidding? <laughs> yeah, that would be tough. That's like be- coke. It's like you can watch someone do coke. Heroin's like oof. Yeah, that's brutal. <laughs> yeah, no, it was that, and I was that was that was. It wasn't bad. It was just like, holy shit. Like, why? First of all, like, so there's some things that I don't need to read or see. Like, I'm just fine, like, going out, going, like, about my day without, like, knowing some things. And that was one of them because it's, I'm never going to post it. I'm not going to, you know, really do anything with it. So I don't. How many nude shots do you get sent? Not, I haven't really, I haven't gotten any nude shots. I'm, I'm actually surprised. I'm the only one who sends them. I'm like, hey, one. <laughs> I just sent a bunch of dick pics. I'm like, how about this one? Nah, nothing. I get no response. She's like, you're not famous, bro. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I, besides the Chris Evans one, which like when did its rounds, like that's the only like celebrity penis I've ever received. Until Dax, Dax. No, okay. Um, uh, <laughs> how many? I'm question, you're, how many are the ahead, big Adam. outlets reaching out to you for help? Or like, hey, we heard the story. We wanted to ask you if you could give us a little more information. Can you put us in touch with the person who wrote the story? Um, that does happen. You're making their job easier. They're like, well, no this shit, is great. Which is like, honestly, that's like the only thing that kind of like pisses me off. Is like I'm like working for that. Like you know. Besides, like, the people who enjoy it, I am, because they, they can just scroll through and see, like, also, because I'm picking up also, like, hot things that are happening on Twitter or, like, in other places, and they could just easily scroll through and see what's going on and then research it further themselves, so. People are lazy. People are lazy, so you're making their job super easy. Yeah, thanks for reminding me. <laughs> <laughs> now, are you doing this all by yourself? Um, I have some help with certain aspects of it, um, but main, like all the posting and answering of DMs, yes. Now, where where do you see the future of Dumois? Um, you know, I take it day by day. I don't really know. Like as I told you before we started recording, like some days I'm like I'm done. Like I just want to quit. So I like to keep it open ended. I'm like a commitment phobe, so I don't want to commit to anything um too far in the future because that will just like create more anxiety for me so i like having it open-ended and being like okay tomorrow like i'm done so that makes it more fun fun for me if i put too if i put too much on it then it, it wouldn't be fun yeah yeah it's uh i gotta say this is one of my favorite instagram accounts i i love following it it's like one of those things where you know it comes pretty much i see at the end of the day then i get stuck reading through every single instagram story a lot of people do instagram stories and i just kind of push the button just to go through them but this is one that i i sit there and read every single one uh make sure you follow her at a dux moi uh dumois that's how you say it dumois dux M-O-I, it's a great account if you're into celebrity culture. It's fun, it's raw, it's real. Well, we hope it's real, um, <laughs> but I believe it's real. Uh, and I, you know, again, and how do I know it's real? Because I agree with everything she just said. And I say this, you know, the people you just said are nice. They're, they're, you got it right. There is not one of those people who's like, eh, no, they're all good people. So, you, I mean, you, you're doing a good thing. I love it. I love it. It's so good. It's so much fun. And we miss, uh, wish you much success, and we're excited to see where the account goes. We're excited to see what you do next. You know, it's it's fun. It's I think it's a lot of people's guilty pleasure, and it's it's really entertaining. So just keep up what you're doing. I hope you don't get burnt out, and uh, I, I hope it becomes r- even bigger for you. Thanks, guys. I appreciate it.